सत्यनजसावर्तमो निवेशयन्मृत मर्त्यंच हिण्यन सविताथेना देवो याधिभुवना विपश्यन्न अग्नि दूत वृणीमहे होता विश्वेदस अस्यु येषाशे पशुपति पशूना चुष्पदा मुत चिपदा निष्क्रीयम भागमेतुराय स्पोषा जमान से सू अधिदेवता प्रत्यधिदेवता सहिताय आदिताय नम नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू कैवल्य योगा गुरुकुलम के वाई जी एज वी ऑल नो इट टुडे इज मकर संक्रांति सो विश यू ऑल अ वंडरफुल अबंडस फिल्ड हैप्पी joyous and an amazing makar sankranti happy makar sankranti in today's vlog what i want to do is kind of explain um share some notes if you will let me see if i get this correct i'm still playing with this um so what i want to do is explain to you what makar sankranti is and we will take it from there all right let's put that aside so what is this makar sankranti what is the big deal about it right almost every other day there is some some festival or the other a reason to celebrate a uh, hopefully not a reason to feast but you know you never know but uh, uh, it's it it's 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 a uh, these are all cosmic events that the ancient seers had earmarked in one's calendar to constantly remind us whether it was a lunar event or a solar event such as this um constantly to remind us that we are all interacting with the cosmos knowingly or unknowingly and so these occasions bring us back to that um awareness that we are not alone we have been alone and definitely we are not isolated from the cosmos we are an intricate part of this wonderful creation so so what is the meaning of sankranti what does sankranti mean sankranti is a solar event it is when the sun moves from one zodiac sign to the other now there are 12 zodiac signs and we'll come to that in a little bit every month because there are 12 and 12 months in the year so every month the sun transits from one zodiac to the other so every month you do have a sankranti because the sun is transiting from one zodiac sign to the other a new month is born a new month is celebrated that month has meaning and so on and so forth so that is sankranti and then so what is special about this sankranti uh, why is it why is this one celebrated more than the others perhaps many of us don't even celebrate all the other sankrantis but we'll take a look at why this has a special significance and what it means from a spiritual point of view okay so hopefully that made uh, this clear the, the the concept of sankranti all right let's put this away so i want you to take a look at this uh, simple table here that brings us to a concept of time as envisioned by the ancient seers now interested in knowing more about this it's it's really a mind boggling concept of time in different planes of existence that was documented and it's available so if you're interested let me know in the comments and um, i'll be glad to do a blog on that because it simply gives an idea of how much how much these yogis and seers thought of time as it exists in different planes we all know that time changes from one planet to the other right saturn revolves around the sun uh, it takes one 30 years to do one revolution so for 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 saturn to do one year would be equal to 30 years from our point of view because we take only one year to go around the sun 
uh, Saturn takes 30 years and so on. So even, even among these planets in this plane of existence, we have so much difference of time. Imagine if we go to different planes of existence. But what makes this Shankaranti special is what I want to come here. So I'm not going to get into the details of that. In our plane of existence, the physical plane, the Bhu Loka, the physical plane, I'm, I'm just calling it the human plane. In human years, one year is equivalent to one day in what? In the divine plane. It's called the Deva Loka. The, the dimension where you and I, if we evolve enough, can, and can, um, can live here, right? So that is the divine plane. This is where the embodiments of all these elements live and they energize elements like water, air, fire, the sun, all of these devas or angels, if you will, that's known as the Western uh, world, knows it as angels, I guess. But in, in the Eastern concept, in Sanatana Dharma, we talk about Devas. So in the Deva Loka, one year is equivalent to one day. Okay, and so like in different planes of existence, in between these, there's an ancestor plane. And so that time changes there. So we will talk about it later. But for today, just to understand the Shankaranti concept. Every day, for, therefore, every day at the divine, divine plane, they celebrate Shankaranti. We, Makra Shankaranti, we celebrate it once a year. Okay. So what, is, what, is, what do we mean by day? So let's see here. Um, the way we understand here in, in Vedic astrology, in terms of time and etc. I, I hope this is clear. Let me put this away. Uh, let me put all these away. Okay, good. One day is not just the day as we know it, day versus night. I'm, I'm using it more colloquially here. One day equals... 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. Ahoratre. That's how in Sanskrit it is said. Ahoratre means day and night. Day and night together becomes one. We call it colloquially one day. Okay. So it is 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of night is one day. So imagine in this Devaloka that we talked about, it is one day for them. One year for us is one day for them. So how do we understand this concept here? This concept of one day here in Devaloka and how does it apply to us? All right, so remember 12 hours, 12 hours makes one day. So in the divine plane, what does it mean? It means six months and six months because for them, one day is equivalent to one year of our time. So from our point of view, six months in the year is night time for the Devas. Six months in the year they wake up. So it is called the daytime of the Deva. There's a lot more significance, deeper significance to this. But for this vlog, I'm just explaining the idea here. So the six months that they are awake, it is called the Uttarayana. This is from mid-Jan to mid-June. The West knows it as the winter solstice. And the six months of sleep for the Devas, which is night time for them, is called the Dakshinayana. That is six months. So what does Uttarayana mean and what does Dakshinayana mean? So let's explore that for a second here. Um, most of you probably know these already, but I just want to make sure we are all on the same page because as we begin to study the spirituality and as, as practice spirituality, we got to understand our relation with the cosmos and how the seers had laid it all down for us. So Uttara, Uttara means north. Ayana means the path, the transit, the journey, if you will. Uh, therefore, you have Uttarayana and Dakshina Ayana. Ayana means the path. That is why Ramayana, Ramayana is what then? Ramayana was, is, is a path of Rama, which is the path that you and I can follow, the path of righteousness, the path, the path of valor, 
the path of um, principles and values around which everything revolved for Rama, right? So that was Rama, Ayana, Ramayana. So we'll keep that aside. So Ayana means a path, a path that is laid out, okay? A path in which uh, the sun transits. So Uttarayana is what is beginning from today and tomorrow. As the sun enters uh, Makara, we begin this, this Uttarayana. That means it is a time for the Devas to awaken. So they are slowly stretching their limbs and, and yawning perhaps and slowly getting up from their sleep. So we awaken them with uh, spirituality, with chanting, with mantras, with prayers. Because it is said that the, the food for the Devas is our mantras. They, they live on our mantras, not, not the sweets that you offer. That is because you and I eat it later on. So that is uh, something we have cooked up. But the Devas, for them the food is mantras. Mantras that we contemplate upon, mantras that we chant. Every good thought is a mantra, right? So all of that becomes food for them. In other words, they become alive in us. So this is the time, this is the period from January, mid-January to mid-June is a time for um, intense spiritual practices so that we awaken the divinity within us. In other words, north in our body is up here. South, as we know, Sri Lanka and Sita, we, we, we learned that in the, in the Hanuman Yagna. So Sita and, and Sri Lanka and um, South is down in the Muladhara, Sahasrara, this is North. So the sun is transiting to the North. In other words, the sun that resides in your heart is now beginning to move up. In other words, our consciousness is now very inclined to move upwards for greater expansion of consciousness, for greater understanding, for greater love, for greater freedom, and so on and so forth. And therefore, this, this time is considered very auspicious. In fact, yogis would choose this particular period uh, from mid-Jan to mid-June to, to leave their body. They would say, I, will, I want to die during this time when the devas are awake, so they will receive me. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice way to look at it. So Uttarayana and Dakshinayana are the six months, six months of, of, of the Devas who are awake and six months for their night time. But for us, it is a whole year. For them, it is just night and day because one year equals one day. Okay, so I wanted to make sure this is what, this is the understanding of Uttarayana, Dakshinayana and this whole concept of, you know, let me see if I can get this. Yeah, I'll get this out of the way. All of these things. This is what. So what, what is Makara Shankaranti then? Right? What, what does that mean? So let's see. Um, so I had these words winter solstice, summer solstice. Um, just for reference. Uh, they don't really match. Because uh, the, the, the winter solstice year is December 21st. Shortest day in the summer solstice is June 21st. So it, it doesn't have to match with the Indian calendar. But, but just to give you a reference, uh, it, it's almost like it's very universal. Maybe a couple of weeks here and there, but it's very universal. The understanding of the journey of the sun. So this is a solar event. And um, in the Hindu calendar, in the Sanatana Dharma calendar, the solar events are marked by the Shankarantis. Every month when the sun transits from one to the other, it is celebrated. There is a meaning, there is a practice. Done. So what I do, I just do sun salutations on those particular days every month just to commemorate that event, that move of the sun and to acknowledge that I'm in tune with the sun. So you can uh, think of something simple like that as well for your own sadhana. All right, so now comes the, let's see if I can get this down. All right, this is an interesting thing that I wanted to share. Uh, hope it's, I ho hope it's not too technical, but gives us an idea of what is this. All right, so here you have what you see, a, a simple table. This is a Vedic chart. This is how in south of India, we draw the 12 zodiac signs. This chart of 12 boxes, if you see, is a geocentric model. In other words, the earth is right here. I've just written the sun to explain Shankranti, right? So we can even get that out of the way because I don't want you to get confused. This is not the place for the sun, but just wanted to explain. So this is the earth. This is where you and I are. 
And the way we perceive life is how we perceive the sun rising and setting. The sun really doesn't rise, doesn't move at all, right? But we, from where we are, relatively speaking, our perception is that the universe moves around us, correct? And so it's based on that. Because of that perception alone, uh, we, we perceive everything else in our life. Everything is only a matter of perception. Right from enlightenment to ignorance is a matter of perception. And that perception brings about a perception of reality. And that's why some people can swear that this is real and there's nothing more to it. While some others can say there is so much more to it than what we can see through our senses. Everything is a matter of perception. So the Vedic seers, the yogis took advantage of that. They said, yes, this is how it is, but we can help you perceive more. Perceive more accurately, perceive more broadly, and perceive from a point of self-empowerment. Okay? It's a different matter today because of Vedic astrology becoming a business. The whole thing is, is, is bizarre. So I, I won't comment on that. Someday we will learn this more in detail. All right. So this is the way that in South India they would bring, bring about and draw a chart. Each box is 30 degrees. So you have 12 boxes. 12 into 30 is 360 degrees. That completes a circle. You have Aries, you have Taurus. You have Gemini, Cancer, and I put English just so that every one of us can understand. Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. So these are the 12 signs. The sun transits to each of them. What is Makara Shankranti? Makara, or crocodile, is the sign, is a Sanskrit word for the sign Capricorn. So you see Makara here. Let me make it a little bigger here. Okay. So this is Makara. Makara is, this is Capricorn here. The sun has just about entered Capricorn. Jan, Feb. Mid of Jan and Feb. Usually, this is on the 14th of every January. Uh, in, when there is a leap year, it becomes 15, I believe. But nevertheless, most of the time, it's, it's 14th of January when he, when he just steps in. But it's not a one-day event. You celebrate it today, you celebrate it tomorrow. Uh, in, in the south of India, they have four days to celebrate this in many ways. So it's, they have a bhogi, then they celebrate it as Makara Shankranti, and then they celebrate as Matupongal, and so on and so forth. So it, what happens here is this is where the winter in the, in the tropics come to an end, and slowly it's the beginning of the harvest season, the beginning of spring, the bringing, beginning of warm, so people can get out of their homes and start working. So this is a celebration of that. So the harvest festival is where this begins. So Makara is where the sun transits in the mid of Jan and Feb, trans sun transits here. Then the sun transits to Aquarius in the middle of February and March. This is, these dates here are for the transit of the sun. Okay, it doesn't mean anything else. So don't get confused by these. Now the sun has entered into Makara. So we said we have a two-day, three-day celebration. In fact, you can celebrate the whole of this month um, until mid-February mid when it will transit into um, Aquarius. Now, what is this northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere and this northern transit and southern transit? What do we understand it? How do we understand it here? Now, when you look at a chart like this, I put two of these zodiac signs in white and the rest are uh, kind of a cream color. From Capricorn, if you notice, the sun is going to go this way, up and come here. So from Capricorn, until he enters Cancer, this is called the northern transit of the sun. The sun begins his northern transit, right? And then from mid-June, July on, he comes down and he does a southern transit. This is where the sun begins to lose his power in the sense winter sets in. And so like you just saw in the last couple of months, peak winter. Now, where we are, <laughs> we still have a long way to go. Uh, so this may or may not really apply to us. Uh, because like I said, I'm, I'm, we, I live in United States of America. This is the East Coast and we are in the thick of winter. So Talking of spring, we are too early. We're going to get spring when the sun, when it is summer in India, we get spring. So by then, sun actually comes into Aries, we begin to um, get spring. By then, sun is in his, in his full-blown power 
in summer in, in India and in, in the tropics. So when sun enters Capricorn, he is beginning his northern journey and therefore this Makara Shankranti has an added significance. So Makara means, it simply means this Shankranti is called Makara Shankranti because Makara is a Sanskrit name for Capricorn. Okay. So then you'll have Kumbha Shankranti, you'll have Meena Shankranti, you'll have Mesha Shankranti, you'll have Rishabha Shankranti. These are all Sanskrit names for each of the Shankrantis that goes on. But Makara Shankranti added significance because winter is coming to an end and the sun is now transiting. This is the significance of Makara Shankranti. This particular year, it is, it is um, unique simply because when sun enters this zodiac, Saturn is also in that. This is considered home of Saturn. Like I said, if you don't know Vedic astrology, it's all right. Just listen to it. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating study. So Saturn is in his own home and Sun enters and joins Saturn. So what's the big deal, right? There, there has to be planets in some zodiac sign or the other and the Sun is going to come close to them. Yes. But what is so special about Saturn and the Sun? Think of it this way in our solar system. The Sun is in the center. And he is an extrovert. He is sending out his rays out into the universe. He is bold. He is uh, Rajasik, if you will. He is the king. He wants to go out and bless and, and uh, heal. And, and that's, that's the energy of the sun, correct? That's why even we don't see the sun like we are in Cleveland. We don't get to see the sun uh, next couple of weeks or more. And we get kind of we thirst for the sun, right? So the sun is sending out his rays. Exactly opposite to that is Saturn. Saturn is furthest away from the sun. Beyond him, the sun's rays don't go. And that's why in Vedic astrology, we don't consider Uranus and Neptune and Pluto and all of these planets in the study because the understanding is not because they don't exist, they are also mentioned, but then their electromagnetic rays are so weak that it really doesn't um, affect us as much as all the other celestial bodies affect us. So, nevertheless, Saturn is the one who says, all right, sun, your rays don't go beyond me. So he brings about, he draws a fence. So he's the only one who can control the sun who's otherwise expanding in his glory. So they are called father and son relationship. Just for our understanding. The son loves his father, the son respects his father, but then he does not allow that. So there is, there is an inherent conflict, if you will, simply because of two opposing forces. One wants to go out, the other wants to curtail that extrovertness and say this is it. So it's interesting and because Saturn takes 30 years to complete this circle, the sun takes 12 months to complete this circle because the Saturn moves very slowly. He's furthest away from the sun. So for his revolution takes long. So he takes 30 years. This happens once in 30 years, roughly, right? So once in 30 years, sun and Saturn meet. It's a very unique combination. It'll be very interesting to see in the next one month how this triggers certain things that will guide us for the rest of the year, perhaps the rest of the life. These are the cosmic events that, that trigger certain things in us. Good or bad, all that again it becomes relative. It's a matter of perspective, right? If, if I win a lottery, I'll say it's good. Is it good? I don't know. I just assume getting more money is good and therefore I'll say it's good. If I lose some money or if I fall ill, I might say it's bad. Is it bad? I don't know. It's again a matter of perspective. So we leave those things aside. Don't worry about good and bad. Contemplate on, on, on your actions and your thoughts, it would be interesting to see you might experience more than any other time the two opposing forces and maybe there, there is there, there, a new energy might emerge. You want to do something, you cannot do something or whatever it is and then a new energy might come because of this beautiful forces, one the sun that is light and Saturn that is the energy of shadows. And so both these come together and are empowering us today and for the next 30 odd days. So my dear sisters, brothers, this is Makara Shankranti. May this Shankranti therefore help you 
transit northward, help you awaken the devas who are just getting up from their sleep after six months. For them, it is just one night. For us, it's six months. So here is a chance to awaken the divinity within us. These are the times where the universe helps you to do that. You don't have to work very hard towards it. This is why, this is the time. This Shankaranti on, you make resolutions and, and try and keep up the resolutions at least for the next three months before summer comes and then the new year begins when sun is in its peak for the south, south of India and most of India, uh, based on the Sanatana Dharma. They celebrate the new year and in the West we celebrate Easter. So this is a very important period here again where the whole of earth begins to radiate sun's energy. Uh, in this part of the world, spring blossoming. In, in the tropical regions, you have sun in its full power and glory. So from here, it's a very beautiful transition as well. But nevertheless, let Makara Shankranti therefore Fill your homes with this joyous celebration of light and shadows. May, sh may Saturn guide you and, and guide your feet, if you will. Slow you down, make you contemplate on what life is all about. What, is, what are the priorities in life? Who are the real friends? What is really that we require? What is the purpose of life? He is the one. Saturn is the one who gives you time to contemplate. And now that the sun within you, the sun within me is entered and joined this. The sun wants to move fast. Saturn slows him down. So enjoy this confluence of the father and the son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Namaste. Pongalo Pongal Pongalo Pongal Pongalo Pongal Namaste wish you all a very happy and blessed Pongal may your homes be filled with abundance and joy <laughs>